Hey guys, Thomas here. Today we're going to be covering digital microscopes, how we use them for the quads and how they may be useful for you. Actually, when I say we, I mean Dad's actually covering this one. This whole thing basically originates from an Instagram story I posted a while back of Dad working on one of my quads and bringing it back to life. Uh, we got a lot of questions about what we used and why we chose it. So since this is really Dad's baby and what he picked out, he'll be the main focus of this video today. With that, enjoy. Hi guys, Paul here, and today we're looking at the Andenstar AD409 digital microscope. I've looked at these types of microscopes from time to time and never really followed it up until earlier this year. I basically did a ton of research, and by research I actually mean watch YouTube videos uh, on microscopes and soldering, etc. The two microscopes that really did stand out were the AD409, which is this one, and also the AD407, which is the model below this one, and both of those pretty much fit in my price range. And the video quality was good, the reviews were good, and also uh, the image wasn't laggy. So trying to coordinate your tweezers, soldering iron and solder was going to be a lot easier working under this type of microscope. Okay, as far as features, the AD409 has a 10.1 inch LCD display, uh, adjustable metal stand with monitor tilting, two fixed metal clips for the base, which are designed to actually hold the workpiece underneath the microscope. I don't actually use this. I will touch bases on that a little later on in the video. Uh, the ability to record to a micro SD card for capturing video and photos. Two built-in adjustable LEDs to light your work area. And HDMI USB connectivity. Also supports Wi-Fi connectivity on this model, so you can connect to a an iPhone or a smartphone or a tablet. As far as what's included in the package, this unit came with a metal base with LED lights, the main bracket to hold the microscope and monitor, remote control, AC adapter, cables, and UV filter. Now, we're not in the UV filter. Mine wasn't actually in the packaging, and I discovered later on it was actually already installed on the microscope. So if you do happen to buy one of these, keep that in mind. The UV filter might actually be on the microscope and already pre-installed. It also came with these clips, which I didn't end up using. I tried to use them, but they didn't seem to work in the sense that you needed to be able to move the workpiece underneath the microscope. So I basically removed those, and I purchased a PCB holder from... I think it was either Amazon or eBay, and that's pretty much doing the trick perfectly. On the front of the LCD screen, you've got six buttons. You've got the power on off, menu mode, scroll up and scroll down, an OK enter button, which is also used to start and stop recording of video, and a picture capture button. And directly underneath, what you've also got is the IR sensor, if you intend on using the remote control. On the back of the device, you've got the micro SD card slot, and even though it's on the back, it's relatively easy to get the card in and out. Next, you've got the USB port, which supplies power to the LEDs and the microscope. This port can also be used to connect to your PC, and it will be detected as a camera. Next, you have the HDMI port, which will allow you to output to an external monitor. Moving on to how we use this microscope and what pretty much led to me making this video some time ago thomas did a video i think it was on instagram of me doing a repair on his esc basically the uh, main connector that connects the esc to the flight controller had ripped off but it looked as though the pads were all intact so i did a quick repair and he was pretty much over the moon and posted that on instagram and we had a ton of questions in regards to the microscope how we use it what we thought about it and why we picked this specific microscope this is the video of me doing the repair to Thomas's ESC, which pretty much worked perfectly and the ESC is perfectly functional. So um, it's just good being able to work under a microscope and know that the connections are perfect and you can see the solder joints are pretty much spot on. It just simplifies things so much. We've also used this microscope from everything from doing repairs through to investigating why an ESC and FC may have failed due to a crash and what components have been damaged, etc. just allows you to examine things way more quickly closely and precisely now obviously this isn't for everyone it comes down to how much electronic work you actually do and if you feel you need something like this and hence the purpose of this video anyway i hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got something out of it um, if you are interested in picking up something like this i will get a link down in the description um, it won't be an affiliate link or anything like that but uh, you're more than welcome to buy this from anywhere you like if you've got other microscopes you actually recommend or you use you can link those down below too or mention them and if you have any questions about this video or microscope 
feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.